How did the relationship between your two companies start? And when did you know you had something special and could work together? It's true that uh, I visited TopCon. Of course, our, our uh, software has been used in common with TopCon software and equipment uh, for some while. Um, Ray, I actually uh, saw some work that TopCon was doing, and I remember being in a European city and seeing one of your mobile mapping, or mm. TopCon equipped mobile mapping yeah. uh, vehicles, and sort of, I might say I anticipated 2019, because we've just been talking about mobile mapping coming into digital mm -hmm. twins, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I wondered uh, what, what kind of company TopCon was and asked if I could visit to uh, explore that uh, and discovered uh, what you already know, Ray, which is that uh, TopCon's always inventing something new mm -hmm. uh, and, and then uh, working and caring about getting it applied uh, and I'd like to think that's true of our company also. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Greg is saying exactly where it uh, started at the beginning. The only story we missed there was the equipment on your farm. Oh, And the gosh. moving the right equipment. H how about <laughs> this? So, so I, uh, I might hear Ray talking about and TopCon folks talking about uh, their, uh, how, how engineers of every sort, including operators, uh, prefer their gear to a competitor's gear. Mm -hmm. Would you believe on my farm, I put a new driveway in, quite a, quite a project actually, and the excavating firm uh, had brand new uh, bulldozers, graders, yeah. bulldozers, uh, and I saw them one day d doing something themselves to brand new equipment mm -hmm. and ripping stuff off. The fact is, this is a true story, they, they said yes we're taking off the control units that were on the brand new cat I think machines. It was cat, cat caterpillar, machine, yeah. caterpillar machines because we only use Topcon gear once we have the TopCon gear on there, we can do your job very easily in an automated way. See, we've put these control points here, there, and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, and this was not a sophisticated excavating company. They were doing a driveway on a farm. Uh, but they cared enough about uh, and, and, and found the, the TopCon interface to be reliable enough and to improve their work enough that they were actually replacing the control units on brand new equipment with with TopCon gear that they had bought out of their own pocket and uh, and were believers yeah. in, and they did a good job. <laughs> Ray, yeah, I would tell you, the if there were any problem with runoff, yeah, I would get a call. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was uh, you know just a great story, and you know when Greg came out to visit, of course we were delighted to have Greg come out because we had interfaced with Bentley software in certain applications and places. But I think very important in a business relationship. Number one, Greg had a great vision about this constructioneering, uh, connecting engineering with contractors, and we had recognized that problem. Didn't know the name, they, he branded the, uh, uh, the name constructioneering, but we just had a great chemistry, I believe, between the philosophies of the companies. Bentley is a great inventor of their software products, and uh, driving the market you see here in year and infrastructure, all the companies in the world that are doing the largest projects using Bentley software. And for us, you know, I said it this morning, a big part of what we do in automating construction in the field, we're very focused on that part and we continue to move on that part, but the engineer, the engineering side of the business doesn't necessarily know all the changes and all the things that are going on in the field. And so we have this challenge of educating engineering and uh, cons the construction people who are communicating 
data to each other, but they really don't understand how to do the work. Therefore, they can't design the workflow to be as automated uh, as it needs to be. And so that started to become obvious. We did, first we connected <laughs> field software with design and planning software at Bantry to make the workflow easier. Then we said we need to do some academies in this construction area to educate engineers and contractors and surveyors in what they're doing and show them what the capability is. And I can tell you, when we did these academies in construction earring, the just going out and talking to the engineers, just saying, we had no idea how the contractor was applying all this technology to this uh, application. So after we got and learned that, it became obvious that the industry needs experts who understand both the office and the field, and if we can group them together and go in and help companies to understand the power of the tools that they have, we can really start to impact the uh, workflow in the industry. And that, that's, what, five years now, Greg? Well, so I would make two observations. One is that um, when we got together with TopCon, we weren't asking for anything in particular other than can we explore together how engineers using what we now call digital twin software can work together mm -hmm. with constructors in a in a process that would be the that would be one process construction here and we we didn't know what was needed we we wanted to approach that problem together and work it out as we have and improve the approach over these several years now something else that I noticed along the way is that, uh, of course, constructors and engineers, infrastructure professionals are visual, hands-on people, and you like to show them what works rather than lecture to them, whatever. Yeah. So in practice, that means we would often ask TopCon folks to help us with a proof of benefit or a proof of concept uh, to actually go on some sites and create some examples of success and learn while we were doing it. That's right. Feedback to the software folks how to make that work better and be more automated, more of a, uh, more of a uh, digital workflow. The top con people were always very enthusiastic about doing that. They always did a great job. They had real zeal uh, to accomplish this. And then I realized they had day jobs. You know that were different than that, but there's something about you know engineers like to help engineers. They like to show engineers what are possible, and our thought was, what if we had a company like that uh, that's not writing software but is uh, working on what the applications would be of the technology, and if Bentley folks or Topcon folks didn't have to do that besides their day job, what if it were their day job to advance the people and processes by which this technology or this concept of construction earring can be actually applied as a norm rather than as an exceptional extraordinary project of the sort we recognize here. Uh, and I think that was the seed for Digital Construction Works. That's right. Can you tell me a little bit about the Digital Construction Works venture and how it will improve construction? Well, Digital Construction Works is a new independent company jointly owned uh, by Bentley Systems and by TopCon equally. Uh, it is staffed with folks who have come from Bentley Systems and have come from TopCon and now work for Digital Construction Works. Its charter is to provide what we call the digital integration services uh, to, to take what our software and hardware capabilities and put them into construction processes that uh, accomplish what construction earring can accomplish, but only when they're applied in practice as a norm on actual projects and where that requires some innovating beyond merely automating what's been done before and, and improving that incrementally, uh, rather to rethink I mean, I, I, uh, I think of it as if you know your project's going to be a digital twin project and it's going to be, you're going to have 
positioning input throughout, and you're going to be 4D surveyed, by which I mean continuously resurveyed, then how would you, how can you do it differently? How can you, you know, in my mind's eye, it's, some, it's things like putting decals on things that are ready to be inspected that are temporary and uh, 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 things that can be recognized by machine learning and so forth. Th this isn't writing software. It isn't, it, it's, it's, uh, the, uh, it's the creative way of bringing resources together when you know it's going to be a digital project that you couldn't do otherwise so that the whole thing is uh, more effective. How can engineers take advantage of this new launch? How might they take part or even improve infrastructure construction? It, Ray talks about an infrastructure gap, how we're going to accommodate and improve the lives of all the people yet to be born as the planet gets better, more populated and more urbanized. Uh, I think private investment in infrastructure is here to stay. Often that takes the form of project delivery solutions where design and build is done by a consortium. Often engineers would like to participate in, in those types of consortia and constructioneering can be a skill set that will better entitle engineers to be part of uh, alternate delivery or design build teams. If they would like to do that, they're interested in the types of services that digital construction works can provide to help make that project be an innovative one that, that works well. And where the digital construction works staff is prepared to be embedded in the project with the digital integration responsibilities uh, and to help uh, invent and recognize and implement new workflows that could that can be part of that. There are many other ways in which digital construction works could help, but when you ask about engineers, I believe that engineers uh, would like to participate more so in outcomes-based commercial models rather than selling their hours. And when we talk about improving and bending the, the productivity curve, when we talk about introducing automation and robotics purposefully, uh, in construction projects, uh, the, the opportunity is to structure it so that perhaps could there be a concession or a consortium which would look like an engineering firm, a contractor, and digital construction works providing the digital connections between the two, yeah, and in each that. of the constructor and the engineer, the connections to their enterprise systems yeah. that someone's got to work out. Yeah. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. The <clears throat> when we talk about the digital twin, I always use this simple analogy because in the construction world, sometimes it's it, you want to simplify it to a very practical term. So I always talk about an owner's manual and a parts manual. If you own this asset, this uh, Marina Sands Hotel, when it's designed, it's never built exactly as it was designed, hence the reason for the digital twin. The owner of the asset ultimately wants to have an owner's manual and a parts manual at the end of today with all that data. So how do the engineers know what the contractor has the capability to do? What way they're going to measure and collect all the data and feed it back into the uh, digital twin? That's why we're putting these experts together from both companies that have all that knowledge of what the technology is and what the capability is, so you can really realize producing that uh, digital twin and help educate them to be more knowledgeable about the tools that are available to get that done. And that's what the industry uh, needs at the, you know, at the end of the day. It has a tremendous need for that knowledge to be uh, shared. and that's obviously why we believe in what we've put together. Beyond digital construction works, how do you see your companies working together? C could I answer that? Okay. We've announced an acquisition uh, here in the mobile mapping space, and when I asked uh, for some help in presenting that, uh, our people in digital construction works say, yeah, we're going to be taking advantage of that. By the way, uh, here's some images of how 
uh, at TopCon, the, the equipment used for mobile mapping, and then the software we have and then that we now newly have acquired. He, here's how it works together well, and it was a former TopCon person, now at Digital Construction Works, who, 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 who explained and proposed the, and, and showed the narrative for that. So, gosh, infrastructure project delivery, infrastructure uh, digital twins, it is a time and space occupancy problem. It is fundamentally a 4D endeavor. So positioning is absolutely of the essence to getting it right. Uh, there's whatever else you might do if you don't have the positioning right, and it means more and more different things all the time. The, the, cert, the, the products and offerings and inventories of TopCon is five years now, it, now very different than it was five years ago. Uh, the purposes it's accomplishing are the same, but it's done differently, and the same on the uh, software side. So uh, wh if you imagine a robotics jo job site, and people say, okay, let's imagine that. Today, you look at what TopCon's already doing, something they call smooth ride, which, which uh, solves the, the grading and milling problem on, on roadways. And, and, and does it in a closed loop from the engineering specification uh, to capturing back the, the as-built. Uh, for us to be able to take advantage of that kind of throughput mm -hmm. uh, from an engineering side and know that it can be done is the type of cooperation between the positioning systems and the uh, design software uh, and enables the as built to be captured f so that the engineer's work can be the digital DNA then to keep that road functioning well <coughs> over time. Uh, it, it is, um, uh, it, it's, it's priceless. Yeah. Uh, and I, from my perspective, we know what we know. So the evolution of the business from starting with just connecting field software and design and project software at the beginning to the joint venture, that's the evolution. But we don't know what we don't know. But we do know that together we have tremendous capabilities to solve these problems. And new problems are gonna come up and we will figure out how to deal with them. So I believe the relationship will continue down that path and we've built it over a period of time where we get to know each other and understand each other and understand this can be a significant uh, step function change in our industry. And we don't know what we don't know yet. That's the reality. Something that is essential and different five years ag than five years ago when we began this is the cloud service. And, and the interoperations occurring as a cloud service is just very natural. It's very natural between the office and the field, as, as Ray points out. It's natural between the engineers and the contractors. It's, it's something that's essentially needed. It's also a new commercial opportunity for each of our companies. Uh, and finally, for Digital Construction Works, it will allow their folks to be embedded under virtual hard hats, participating in actual construction projects because of the cloud service allows them the visibility into the, into the work and how to uh, improve the processes. I can tell you from our side of the industry, I'm involved in some other organizations uh, in the construction business with AEM, the equipment manufacturers, and it's exactly the discussion that's going on inside that uh, organization is how we can help automate the industry and save the waste and the loss that goes on in the inefficiencies of the construction industry. So you can feel that you know, things have aligned, the stars are aligning. Just like, I, you know, if you go back to the dot-com era in the late 90s, it never took off because the infrastructure wasn't there. But when the iPhone came along and it created, where AT&T had to start spending a billion dollars a month to create the infrastructure, that's the infrastructure we're using today to be able to do what we can do. We had the idea to do it, but the infrastructure wasn't there to do it. And today, the cost of processing, the co cost of memory is fractional to what it was and so much more powerful. So we're in a great position to 
have an impact on the business because many people will say, well, why didn't you do that years ago? Infrastructure wasn't there. It's there today. And we're going to go leverage it. Cloud services being a case in point. Exactly.